Well, I had two choices. I was going to uh, teach on the book of Verse and Second Corinthians. I've been doing a lot of topical subjects. I did a 31 different things on basic Bible doctrine. And with all the news and the headlines and everything that's going on, uh, I was going to teach on 1st and 2nd Corinthians, which is basically dealing with a lot of problems in the church. But the more I got to thinking about it and with everything that's going on, uh, the more the Lord impressed upon me that I need to teach through the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is a fascinating book. And so what I'm going to do today is just give you an introduction. I'm going to give you the big picture. Okay, you need to follow along with me or you're going to get lost. Because in the book of Revelation, as I'll show you, there's a lot of symbolism. There's a certain way that you interpret that, those symbolism, a certain way that we're going to interpret this book. Okay, now, Revelation is one of the only books in the Bible that gives you a blessing for studying it and for... Well, let me just read you the verse. In Revelations uh, chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed is the one who reads the word of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. And the time is near. It's near today than it was yesterday. Let me ask you something. You know, do you believe the Lord Jesus could come today to rapture out his church? I do. He, that, that doctrine is imminent. Not his second coming, as we're going to see. There are two distinct events. And a lot of what Revelation is about is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, so there's a blessing to read in this book. But at the end of the book, in... Revelation chapter 20, 22, there's also a warning of anybody who tampers with the message of this book. And you be very careful in the way you interpret this or what you say or what you believe it's saying, okay? It says, I warn Everyone, not just some, everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds anything to them, make it say something that it doesn't. God will add to him the plagues described in this book, which are really bad. Okay? And if anyone takes away from this book of prophecy, subtract anything of what it says, God will take away from him the share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. So, in the book of Revelation, there is both a blessing given for reading, hearing, and taking it to heart, and there is a curse given for taking away or to adding anything into it. So, any expositor of the book of Revelation or teaching the book of Revelation has an awesome responsibility. I've studied this book for many years under some of the greatest scholars uh, on earth. Okay, uh, I don't know of anybody greater. Dr. Walver out of Dallas Theological Seminary, uh, Dr. Ryrie, uh, Pentecost, um, Dr. Elsie Fix, who taught me, and plus the extensive study. I have volumes of notes on this. You can't just study Revelation, okay? You have to study some other things as well. Okay, some of the things you're also, okay, I'm starting to cut in and out. I'm hoping it's all coming clear. But lately, I've been having a lot of experience with my internet. I don't know why. But anyway, you have to study book of Daniel. Because what Daniel gives is a prophetic time scale. Okay, we are in what's called eschatological time out now. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. Okay. And he gives the time scale for the end of events. Now, we understand that the book of Revelation, it comes to the word apocalypse. Apocalypse is an unveiling. In other words, uh, you see uh, women, some of them, they wear veils so that they can hide their face, or Moses did when he came down from the mount. Uh, but when you pull away the veil, you begin to see what's there. And that's what the book of Revelation, it's an unveiling 
of Jesus Christ. Of three things of Jesus Christ. His person, his power, and his program. And you're going to see that unfolding as we go through this book. Okay, so let me point out a couple things to you. First of all, you need to circle in your Bible Revelations chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Revelations chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. For what we have there is the outline for the entire book of Revelation. And it says here, and John is told, by the way, the author is John, one of the apostles. Uh, he had been exiled to, I think, a work on mines in the island of uh, Patmos. And while he was there on the Lord's Day, he had a vision, and this is what came to him. Okay, it wasn't an imaginary vision. I mean, he was actually there. Okay, he says, and Jesus is telling him, write therefore what you have seen, that's past, what is now, that is present, and what will take place later after these things. Okay, so right there, John is told to write three different segments of time. What is past, we'll see that in chapter 1. What is present, chapters 2 and 3. And what is yet future, chapters 4 to 22. He's going to write these things, but you got to understand, John had never seen many of the things that he was seeing. So he has to describe what he has never seen based on things that he has seen. He's got to explain the unknown with the known. So he uses a lot of symbolism. I counted over 44 different symbols. So you're going to have John's visions expressed in symbols. Well, we have to tell you what those visions mean. Okay? And some of them are very clear Others are not. Okay. So John's going to write about these things. He's on the island of Patmos. It's around 95 AD after the death of Christ. And he begins to write these things. Now, when we look through the book of Revelation, we got to first go back to the book of Daniel. Because in Daniel, we have the prophetic time scale of what's called the 70th weeks of Daniel. Daniel is given a vision and he's shown what's going to happen in the future. He's, there are going to be a number of, of uh, empires. The Persians, Greek, uh, Medio Persians, uh, and, and, and the Romans, and, and the revised Roman Empire. That are thought, and what they call the times of the Gentiles. So he's given this prophetic timeline. And as we see here, so let me give you the big picture first so you can kind of understand this. This is the law going back. Here's when Christ died on the cross. He's 40 days and then here's where he ascended and the church begins. When the church is raptured out, at that point, the Antichrist is going to rise to power and the seven-year period of tribulation is going to take place. After the seven-year tribulation, then comes the thousand-year millennial rule, which is fulfills what's called the Davidic covenant. Okay, after that, you have the white throne judgment. Okay, so when we're looking at past, present, and future. So here's how the chapters break down in the book of Revelation. Okay, and... In Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 3 deals with the current present church. Many of the problems that are going in the church, and Jesus is addressing his church. After chapter 3, we never read about the church again. It's gone. It's been it's absent. Okay? In 1 Thessalonians. Paul says that the Lord will deliver his people from the great wrath to come, which is the tribulation. He didn't say through the tribulation. And by using literal, historical, grammatical hermeneutics, consistently 
we come up with what's called a pre-tribulational rapture and then the subsequent event of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, it's very easy to show. It's a lot of time to do that, but trust me as I'm giving you this big picture right now. Okay, so you have the law, you have Christ. He comes, he does his ministry. He, he uh, is crucified, he rises, you have the church. We live in what's called an eschatological time, time out. We live in a time of grace. In other words, the time, the clock, isn't running. Okay? There is no time eschatologically right now. We're between what's called the 69 weeks and the 70th weeks of Daniel. Okay? The 69 weeks actually began, if you want to go back and read Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, with the decree to restore and reveal Jerusalem. Okay? It ends the, when the Messiah is cut off in A.D. 33. It began in 44, 5 B.C. and ends in A.D. 33. Now, we, I have a chart and I can show you and break it down to the very day that all that happened. Okay, but that's a whole message in itself. Okay, it's generally you do it when you're in the book of Daniel. It's the eschatological timeline of the 70th weeks of Daniel. But just to show you how we get that, I put it in here. So the bulk of the book of Revelation, after chapter 3 all the way to chapter 18, comprises up of seven years. And that's the Great Tribulation. It's divided three and a half by three and a half. The Antichrist rises to power after the rapture by making a peace treaty with Israel. And then in the middle of the tribulation, he commits what's called the abomination of desolation. He sets himself up to be God. Okay, and a lot of things are going to happen there, and I'll explain it as we go chapter by chapter and all that. But basically what he's doing is he says, hey, if you want to buy yourself, you've got to receive the mark of the beast. You've got to worship me. Now, here's the thing that you need to understand. When the tribulation begins, there are no Christians in the tribulations that enter in. Okay? But they're going to get saved the same way we're saved. Okay? They're going to come to believe and put their trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's another interesting thing. Many of them are going to be martyred. In fact, the majority of them will be killed. At the end of the tribulation, at the end of the tribulation, no unbeliever goes into the millennial that starts at a thousand years. When Jesus Christ comes back and he sets up his righteous theocracy. So a lot of that movie, Thief in the Night, they got it all wrong. One will be taken, one left behind. <laughs> the one left behind is good, okay, because they're the ones that go into the millennial. That's why you be careful with these movies that come out of Hollywood, okay? Unless they have a theologian that's there, you know, evaluating everything they say and do, you got to take everything with tongue in cheek, what they say, okay? It's a good movie overall, but it, there's parts in there that are totally wrong. Okay, so. Here you have all these people that are being saved, and during this time, you've got judgments that are coming, and they're going to be very symbolic. People are going to be dying in a lot of different ways. You're going to have the bold judgment vials and all that, trumpets. You're going to see all these things, see how they unfold. And at the end, you have what's called the Battle of Armageddon. In the book of Daniel, Six things have to be accomplished during this period of time, and I'll talk about that later on uh, when we get to that point. At the very end of the thousand years, you have your white throne judgments all over. So, in a nutshell, the book of Revelation is an unveiling. We're going we're gonna to enter into future events once we get past chapter 3. These are things that have not yet happened yet. It's prophecy. 
Chapter 1 is where John is writing. He's on the island of Patmos. And basically what you have is Christ described. Okay? In a powerful, wonderful way. Nothing like, uh, you know, uh, some kind of hippie Jesus with flowers in his hell talking about love and all that stuff. Not, not that kind of love. You're going to see a warrior. You're going to see a king. You're going to see God. Okay? And you're going to see him describing himself in chapter 1 and also in chapters 2 and 3. In chapters 3 to 18, you're going to see things that are interacting both in heaven and on earth. And the battle that's being taken place. And the minds of people that are blinded. And all the things that God is going to do to try to get them to come to him. And they're going to resist it to the point of death. Like many people do today. Okay? It's not going to be an easy time to come to the Lord during that time. Okay? Most Christians that are born again during that time will die. Okay? God is offering a kingdom of theocracy to the Jews. For the most part, they're going to reject him. But then many of them are going to come to accept him as their king. The reason why many of them don't accept him as king now is because they never saw Jesus as coming, born in the manger, as a servant. They see Jesus coming as a king. That's why the disciples were confused and they kept asking Jesus, even at the end of their ministry, Jesus, this is the time you're establishing your kingdom. Okay? They didn't have any concept of the church. This period of time, which you and I are in right now, the church, is a mystery in the Old Testament. Okay? And like I said, eschatological time is not being counted. We can be raptured out at any moment. Any moment. In fact, every day you ought to get up. When you get up, say, Lord Jesus, this may be today. May, may I not be ashamed that you're coming. Okay? But a lot of revelation is an unveiling that shows Jesus in his person, in his power, and in his program. Okay? And we don't want to miss that. Now, people get all caught up in all kinds of scenarios and different things that that they fail to see that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay? He is going to be glorified as we go through this book. Okay? So you stay with me. Again, as you can see, I, I won't uh, erase this. I'll turn over the whiteboard so in case and if you want to see the big picture, I can reveal it to you right now. Where are we at right now? Well, again... Nobody knows when the rapture is going to happen. But we do know the events that are going to take place during this time, and it certainly seems like that is really close. So hang with me. Stay with me. God bless you. We're going to be blessed as we go through this book. Don't add or take away anything from it.